Good evening. The February 16th, 2023 board meeting is now beginning. <clears throat> Mrs. Medina, roll call vote, please. Mr. Ibarra? Present. Mrs. Haro? Mr. Flores? Ms. Torino Heda? Present. Mrs. Flores? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Item 1.2, renew a pledge allegiance. We stand for the pledge of allegiance. My name on your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miranda. We have an interpreter, Cynthia Bueno, available for Spanish speaking persons. I didn't know that, but thank you, Board President Torino Heda. Good evening, everybody. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Yo soy Cintia Bueno, soy uh, recepcionista y, y traductora del distrito. Esta noche estaremos proporcionando servicios de intérprete. Si alguien desea escuchar la reunión en español, pueden encontrarme en la mesa trasera donde podrán tener el dispositivo y escuchar la reunión uh, simultáneamente. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Item 1.3, adoption of February 16, 2023 agenda. I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda with the following amendments. Amend closed session item 10.5, personnel public employee appointment, discipline, dismissal, release. Addition of four classified coaches, band assistant, co-ed, basketball assistant, girls two, head junior varsity basketball boys, addition of one volunteer coach. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. A second? I'll second. I have a motion by board member Haro and seconded by board member Bertha Flores to adopt the agenda as recommended. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? On a motion by board member Haro and a second by board member Bertha Flores. On a 5-0 vote, the board adopted the agenda as recommended. At this time, we have item 2.1, Slover Mountain High School. Principal Hampton, would you please come up and introduce your student? Good evening, Board President Thorin Ojeda, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience. It is my pleasure, my proud pleasure to present to you tonight some amazing students. They're no secret. They are no stranger to uh, the board meetings but we are very proud of our students. We have Kai Pacheco with us tonight, and we also have Joanne Gomez, hold on, Moreno Gomez <laughs> with us tonight under the direction of Mr. Fatlin, their teacher. So I am going to bring them up to the podium tonight to start our presentation for Slover Mountain High School. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Joanny Moreno. Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Joanny Moreno Gomez, and I'm a senior attending Silver Mountain High School. Hello, my name is Kai Pacheco. I am a junior at Silver Mountain High School, and my pronouns are he, him. Okay, by a show of hands, how many of you guys can say you've had great high school experiences? Okay, 
We stand here today to tell you that being a part of Silver has brought us so many great opportunities to make our high school experience memorable. Here at Silver, students are given the opportunity to express themselves and be a part of the planning that goes into the events that go on into the events that occur. Academic achievements are celebrated through the award celebrations. Recently, we received awards from Super, Su Board Supervisor Joe Baca Jr. and attended by Council Member John Echivara. This year, we were also invited to the San Bernardino County Student Advisory Panel. We were also given the opportunity to participate in the recruiter in the Army Recruiter Workshops and were given opportunity to attend the Give Back program supporting students every month. Silver, student, Silver students also have the opportunities to learn outside of the classroom through field trips, such as the Hamilton play trip. As someone who really loves musical theater, um, this was a very amazing opportunity to get to. Uh, I really love Hamilton and it's also a great history lesson and our founding fathers and how we became the country that we are. We were also um, given the opportunity to go to Cal State San Bernardino leadership course where we were um, given the opportunity to go to the Cal State San Bernardino College and go through the obstacle courses that they have there while also learning tips and tricks about how to be a leader. Also, we would like to give a shout out to Matthew Cortez um, and Ms. Janet Valdez. Matthew Cortez was a silver winner for the CJUSD IT logo contest, and Janet Valdez was uh, is a silver C -E CTE teacher who teaches lessons on logo design and the meaning behind it and popular logos we see today. Matthew transferred back to his home school at CHS in the second semester. For field trips that are coming soon, we have the Crafton Hills College Child Development Center, Riverside City College, Read Across America Elementary Visits, California Theater of Performing Arts, uh, Academy Museum of Motion Pictures, and Riverside Art Museum and Walk and Tour. This year, we've also had the pleasure of being involved in activities outside of Silver, such as the Cooley Ranch Fall Festival, in which students were able to participate and help the elementary with running games and with the prizes that were given. And the superintendent student advisory committee was also an activity we were involved in. Other activities we've held are the synergy visits at Hoopa Vista Elementary, where we would go to the elementaries and help and participate and do little activities with them such as putting like a little toy in the middle of like the center and then they would run after it. It was fun. Um, and at lunchtime, we would have paint and sips during the holidays, like such for Thanksgiving, we painted a, um, the, a gnome with a little pumpkin and there was like tea and we had um, hot chocolate. Hot oh, chocolate was good. It was good. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> and yeah, our librarian made the little concoction thing. And it was really good. And <laughs> finally, this week, we've been feeling the love by celebrating Valentine's Spirit Week activities. Among the activities, we also love helping others. We um, did a holiday wish list where staff purchased us things that students were put on a wish list for themselves or other students, such as a guitar in our library, which was amazing. A lot of our kids actually play guitar and is beautiful to hear during lunch when you're in there. We also participated in the blood drive where we helped students who um, had just donated blood and um, help them with any snacks or if they're feeling faint and we even walk them back to class. Okay. Other activities that make our high school experience fun and all the are all the athletic teams that we have here available and they are the softball season, volleyball season, flag football tournament, and the basketball season, which we're currently in, which we've only lost one time, 6-1. And coming soon, we have the 5K and the soccer season. We play in a continuation league with other schools in San Bernardino and the Riverside County. Students are also given social and emotional support here at Slover. Um, one of the ones that we did was yoga sessions. I think we had two, and these helped 
and really good with decreasing stress and increasing mindfulness. And um, I know a lot of our students really loved it and would love for them to start up again. Upcoming events here at Silver include the, the Silver College and Career Fair, the Mobile Zoo, which would help like the biology classes, the Traveling Tarpos, which is to support the marine biology classes, and the Mini Quarter Celebrations, Award Celebrations, Mini Quarter 4 and Mini Quarter 5. We also have many clubs here on campus, such as DJ Club, run by our Vice President, Ms. Fryho, Film Club, run by teachers, Mr. Fallon and Ms. Richards, the GSA, run by uh, Vice, Pre <laughs> Vice Principal and Principal Fryho and Hampton, and Gardening, run by our Librarian, Ms. T, and Adventure Club, run by our coach, Mr. Lingenfelter. Follow us on social media on all on social media to be updated on up, all upcoming events and be a part of the silver team thank you all for allowing us to spotlight silver at this time and if you have any questions please feel free to ask thank you very nice presentation you have so many things that you are participating in at school and it's giving you a, a lot of reason to go to school besides the academics, and it looks like a really fun place to go. Do I have any other comments? Mrs. Haro? I just want to thank you for coming and uh, presenting. You did, ladies did a beautiful job um, and sharing with us all of the things that are happening at Slover. Um, you have a really great opportunity there and I real I know you realize it and I know your students do you have a great principal and assistant principal and I, it really makes me happy to see all of the events that are happening happening at your school to keep you engaged because you know part of high school is yes we want you to learn that's that's important but we also want you to have fun we know that if you have fun and you love going to school, you're going to show up to school. So just want to say thank you for all you do uh, for your school and thank you to your principal and your assistant principal as well for all they do. Any other comments? This is Flores. Okay, I think um, just uh, for the audience, if you don't know, or, I mean, we, it's no secret um, what uh, Slover Mountain what, uh, has um, accomplished. I mean, they have been acknowledged as excellent schools, uh, as, as an excellent school with wonderful programs. And uh, the the principal would say, well, it's, it's not me, it's the staff. Well, I say, it's the staff, but yes, it is you, Ms. Hampton, uh, a big part of the success for the love that you show your kids. Um, I specifically looked at your, I was looking at your field trips and I like, the fact that you have a lot of field trips, but they all have a focus. I mean, you have, uh, you're going to the Palm Desert, uh, Living Desert um, to, and it's a biology tri trip. And then you have to the aerial tramway, you're gonna go up in Palm Springs, it's an earth science trip. Um, you have Hamilton, you know, you're gonna see the theater arts. Um, so I, I like that every, oh, I see a STEM one, STEM um, Auto Club Raceway, um, whatever you can do. I mean, it seems like it's very well focused but yet you don't forget the fun part. So um, I really uh, appreciate that. Um, also the, the visits to colleges, you're gonna go to Riverside City College. That's a big, big thing, you know? Um, so I encourage you to do more trips like that. Um, we, we will probably see each other at the Read Across America um, at the elementary schools. Uh, us as a board, we always go. So we'll probably see you, we'll cross paths visiting these classrooms. So, um, so uh, Joni and, and Kate, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. And I also wanna thank your teacher who is here in the audience for thank you, thank you for, for what you do. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Flores. Any other comments? Okay. Would you like to come up? We'd like to shake your hands. <laughs> Thank you so much. You did a really good job. Thank you. Very good job. Very good job. Mrs. Medina, did you? 
Uh, Ms. Sandoval came at 5.36. Okay, thank you. This time we are item 3.1, introduction of new management. Assistant Superintendent Dade, do you introduce members of the new management, please? Hi, good evening, Board President Thorin Ojeda, uh, board members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, audience here virtu uh, virtually as well. Um, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce new family members to our CJUSD district. And I'd like to first start with Diane Mendez. We're family now, so you can come a little closer. All right. Um, so Diane is our new facilities project manager. Um, she comes to, uh, comes to us with 20, over 20 years of experience in facility planning, design, and project management. Um, six of those years were in public schools. Um, she worked with Fontana U, uh, USD. Um, she worked at the Cal, with Cal Baptist University as a project manager, where she also earned her BA of administration um, with her minor in sociology. Um, she had, got her certificate of school facilities planning from UCR. Um, and and she, she worked as a facility coordinator for Beaumont Unified as well. And so my favorite part, the fun facts, Diane, if you have never listened to our board meetings, it's my favorite part. But um, 42 years of marriage to that lucky man over there. Two grown children. I like that you emphasize grown. I got three grown. Well, they think they're grown. They, they need jobs to be grown, but uh, they think they're grown. Enjoys hiking, camping, and music. Um, you love the game of baseball, um, and you've been a LA Dodger fan for years. So I have a, a baseball quiz for you real quick, okay? So 42 years of marriage, there's a gentleman that changed the game of baseball. Um, let, me, let me get to it, let me get, yeah, yeah, let me get to it. <laughs> Went to John Muir High School, Pasadena Junior, Pasadena Junior College back in the day, UCLA, and played for the Dodgers. Number 42, Jackie Robinson. Yes, <laughs> you passed. <laughs> so I'd like to give Diane a chance uh, to thank the board and go for it. Good evening, um, President Thoring Ojeda, board members, and Superintendent Dr. Miranda. Uh, it is my pleasure to come to Colton Joint Unified School District and to assist you. There is so much great research on how much facilities can affect education, and I love education, but the part that I get to play a part of is the facilities part. Um, students do better uh, when they have good facilities, so I'm looking forward to helping you guys achieve whatever I can and to get students a great place to learn. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Oh, my husband of 42 years is Nico Mendez. <laughs> nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. One more round of applause for Diane. Next, I'd like to introduce our new uh, principal at Lincoln Elementary, Dr. David Brutus. So Dr. Brutus has a, a vast uh, amount of experience as well. Um, he's had multiple experiences at, uh, at in administration. Um, he's been an assistant principal and a principal. Um, he started his teaching career at Stanford, Connecticut, which was the last place that Jackie Robinson lived before he passed away. Just you know, you can Google it. You can. I'm not making that up. You can Google it. Um, 
And, and he has over a decade of teaching experience. He was a math teacher, an excellent math teacher from what I recall from your reference check. So um, fun facts, he used to coach girls volleyball and basketball in his younger days. Um, he is a, I don't know if I should say this one. He's a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and he, no, yes, definitely give him grace. Um, and he's originally from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And so, um, so, so excited to have Dr. Brutus. He's been um, an assistant principal um, throughout this school year, um, has done a great job at Lincoln. As you noticed from the last board meeting when we made the announcement, um, we're so happy to have him here. And I'd like to give him a moment to address the board as well. Thank you everyone. Thank you board members. Thank you, Dr. Miranda. Thank you, Executive Cabinet. And thank you to all my colleagues. Again, it's a privilege and an honor um, to be given this opportunity to lead Lincoln. I'm so grateful to the staff that um, has um, welcomed me with an uh, open um, arm and a warm heart. We have a lot of work to do at Lincoln, but I'm so grateful for the past administration that have laid a strong foundation for us to build upon and I do not want to undo anything that they have done before. Our job is to just add one layer to what has been done so that way our kids can have the opportunity to experience success and hopefully operate in excellence as I've heard from Slover High School has a, a level of excellence that they have set at their school site. So we hope to do the same thing. So in the upcoming uh, years, I hope that um, we'll get to showcase what we're doing and the great things that we are setting up for our kids to have success. Again, thank you um, for the opportunity and, and I appreciate your vote of confidence in me and the team at Lincoln. Thank you. Congratulations. One more round of applause for Dr. Brutus, please. And thank you very much. Item 3.2, employee recognition. Assistant Superintendent Dye. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the Human Resources Division is extremely honored um, to congratulate and celebrate our November slash December Employee of the Month. To be selected and nominate, nominated by your peers among our thousands of outstanding employees is an outstanding accomplishment. All of our nominees and our award winners have shown dedication, compassion, motivation for their work. We offer our congratulations to our exemplary staff and thank them for the wonderful model that they set for others. We'd like to publicly recognize our winner tonight and invite him to join us up here at the podium. And that is our fabulous Marcos Ruiz, Activities Director of Grand Terrace High School. And tonight, um, honoring, um, helping us to honor uh, Marcos will be Charlie Naples, principal of Grand Terrace High School. I gotta lower it down here. All right, good evening, pre board president, Thorin Ojeda, board of education, superintendent, Dr. Miranda, executive cabinet, parents, families, community, and students. It is my honor and privilege to recognize Marcos Ruiz, Grand Terrace High School's activity director tonight. Every educational institution's goal is to create tomorrow's future leaders. Mr. Ruiz is a product of Bloomington High School. Grow Growing up with these qualities has earned him a uh, valid victorian. You heard me right, valid victorian. Those same qualities that have made him not only a leader at our school, but the district, and our county. CJUSD is proud of the person he has become and GT is grateful every day. He shows up and sprinkles his magic on everything he does. Three things that Mr. Ruiz loves and makes him special. He doesn't just do average. 
He always wants an event to leave a lasting impression on our students. He holds a standard of excellence for students in a creative process so they can glimpse their own potential to make things great and happen. As activities director, he shines by pushing our students to be leaders and doing the things they wouldn't imagine. If you want to see and take a sneak peek of what I'm talking about, go to the GTHS ASB webpage or our Instagram and be prepared to be wild. It's amazing. Check out today too. It's great. Mr. Reese always asks himself and his students, how can we make something better? He is self-reflective when most have already moved on to the next thing. His challenge isn't comparing himself to others, but to be better and improve the process and results for the next time. Seeing our students conduct an after action review after an event is truly something special. There's a saying, there ain't no party like a GT party, and he's a big part of that. Nothing makes him happier than to see others happy. One of his greatest joys is giving students and staff that wow of learning or experiencing something new and belonging to something bigger than themselves. He just doesn't want to give our students and staff an event. He wants them to have a experience, whether it's a rally, a dance, staff party, or a team building activity. He doesn't think twice about digging into his own pockets when the school budget comes up short. I try to help him out as best I can. He always says it's paid in grace. When I asked our students about Mr. Reese, I got, we love him, he's the best. To capture what Mr. Ruiz means to our school, students, staff, and families in words is nearly impossible. What I can say is he creates joy, belonging, connection in our school during a time when many people are starting to find these things in their lives. You can't replicate people like Mr. Ruiz, but we can honor, support, and be grateful every day he walks through the door because we know no one will do it better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Board President Thorin Ojeda, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience and Executive Cabinet. <laughs> and there's my uh, niece uh, saying some words there herself too as well. Um, first and foremost, thank you. And uh, I want to introduce my family that's, that's here tonight as well. So I have my mom and dad, Steve and Juanita. Two of my sisters, Monique Reese and Angelica. My brother-in-law, Andrew, and my niece, Alana. <laughs> and a lot of my, my support team is here as well in the audience. Um, just a quick background. Uh, I began my tenure in the district as Rupa Vista Roadrunner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ruther Harris, uh, Bulldog, Bloomington High School Bruin, and now a Grand Terrace High School Titan. Um, in my heart, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher, and originally I actually wanted to be an elementary school teacher. I had some really inspirational elementary school teachers at Rupa Vista. Um, Chris De La Rosa, Diane Mumper, Mrs. Taylor, and so that was the plan until I went to Bloomington High School and for some reason, I, I don't even know how it happened, but I was enrolled in an agriculture program called the FFA there and it kind of just changed the trajectory of, of my career path. I, I fell in love with the passion for the subject matter. I started participating in public speaking events and then from there I was just exposed to like leadership at a different level and I kind of knew that's what I wanted to, to, to go and do. Fast forward to today, um, I did the, the kind of the math today, and I think I've been in this position with this title for about four and a half years, and every year has been an interesting journey. I finished off the year for uh, Leilani Bautista when she took a different position, so I started with prom my very first weekend right after spring break, and then I started the year in, in the fall of 2019, and then we had a pandemic. And then it was a year of online learning. Then it was a year of restrictions last year with gatherings and masks and, and barriers. And then this year without having a gym has posed its own challenges. But, but every, uh, every year um, it's just been a way for me to just uh, you know, continue to, to break barriers and do things despite all of the, the challenges. Um, but as you know, uh, I've been very blessed along the way. I get to work with amazing student leaders who are constantly looking for ways to improve the experiences of people that we serve. Uh, we strive to be allergic to average, and that's a mod I got from Steve Amundsen uh, from Tulare Western <laughs> Union. Uh, we take risks, we work hard, and we also have fun in the process. Uh, Misty and Alex know my, my counterparts at, at Colton and Bloomington that this position is very different in, the, in, the, in terms of that everything we do is very public, from every dance, from every rally, 
everything that's on social media. And so it's up to a lot of scrutiny and criticism. Everybody has an opinion of, of good or bad about the things that we do. And so I know that they, they feel um, sometimes that, that pressure as well. Um, but like I'm saying, like I was saying, I'm very blessed to work with great students and a support team that make everything I do possible. There's something about having the right people in the right place at the right time. And, and we have that at, at, our, at our school site for sure. Um, for better or worse, my mind is constantly on work mode. Uh, I'll be out with friends or with family or running errands and I'm inspired by something I see and how we can use it for an upcoming activity. Um, I'm a visionary and I like to, to think big and I hope that that's something I can lead by example for my students in my program as well. But at the end of the day, um, going back to my FFA reference, the vice president has a station by a plow. And there's a line in that in their introduction of the public speaking event when they first introduced themselves for an FFA meeting that says, um, the plow is a symbol of labor and tillage of the soil, because without labor, neither knowledge nor wisdom can accomplish much. And so you can have all the best ideas and all the creativity in the world, but at the end of the day, it's those hours that you put in to the work to make it, make it happen. And we have some really hard workers at our site, students and staff who put in countless hours to help pull off events and from rallies to dances with over a thousand people in attendance. And I often put, I feel like I plan like weddings all the time. Because if you had a, a, a big wedding, you know, 200, 300 people's big wedding, when you start having dances and events that have 400, 500, a rally with 1800 people, it really just adds up and puts it into perspective. But again, at the, in closing, it's the collective effort that everyone on my site ultimately puts in that this award is dedicated to. To my admin team, my family, my ASB accountant, Carolyn, my staff, my team, No Sleep, Leilani, Roberta, uh, Ransdale, Lynn, and all the other staff members that are here tonight, Steve. Um, it really, really makes a difference. And you know, all our staff that chaperone uh, clubs and programs, dances, and assist me in all my crazy ideas. Thank you guys so much, you guys. Um, this award is shared with them. And again, we are so lucky that we get to, we don't have to serve our campus and community. Thank you. Long over to. And one more round of applause for Marcos. And Marcos, uh, I heard I heard you say you plan weddings, so my daughter might be getting married soon, and uh, I'm married to a Samoan woman, so we have the village coming, about 500 people, okay? So I'll be calling you. So thank you so much. That, that concludes our presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> We're moving on now to um, item 5.1. I know it's a skip, but we're skipping that on purpose. <laughs> we don't have any public comments. Okay, no. <clears throat> item 6.1 through 6.38. Action items. Would anyone like to pull any item for separate consideration? Oh, sorry. 5.0, administrative position. I was trying to save you time, Tina. I think my directors might appreciate that. <laughs> See, Marcus, you did this to us. I <laughs> put me somewhere else. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Sorry about that, folks. <clears throat> Assistant Superintendent uh, Tina uh, Peterson. Would you please come up and do your presentation? I'm actually going to introduce my, my team. If you recall from the last uh, board meeting, we made a presentation on the dashboard and updated the board on our um, uh, assessment results uh, throughout this year. And so this week, we are also um, going to provide an update on um, some of our other departments in our division and how we're supporting students and student achievement. So tonight, I have Director 
Joda Murphy of School Improvement and Accountability, Direct, Director Dr. Wendy Moore for Language Support Services, and Director Jamal Boyce um, for IT that will be presenting. <laughs> Good evening, Board President Thoring Ojeda, Board members, Superintendent Dr. Miranda, and members of the audience. We want to provide you with an update on how we pr um, provide support for our department and for our schools and for our staff. First off, I wanna talk to you about what the Office of School Improvement and Accountability does. As many of you know, I have the privilege of working with our professional learning team and really looking at how we're, um, really what we've done is we're focusing on how we're using our collaboration time and how we can make sure that we're elevating and enhancing our teacher practices and really focusing on our student performance. What we've done in probably December and January is met with our potential pilot schools. And when we met with our potential pilot schools, at that time we reviewed our professional learning commitments. Um, we gave them some ideas of what our team was working on at that time. And they, they were all pretty clear, regardless of what school I was at, of this is great, we really like what you have done, but we need you to go back and we need the professional learning team to really flesh out the details so that we know what it is that we're committing to. And so we took that information back to um, our team and our team has really dug in and making sure that we're giving our potential pilot schools that information that they need. What we also did is we interviewed our principals and we wanted to find out from our principals what, what does collaboration look like at your school site. We wanted to know the pockets of excellence that they see in their schools, but we also wanted to hear from our administrators, what is the support that you are going to need so we can make sure that we have this effective collaboration going on throughout the district. Um, and so what our professional learning team has done now is, is as we always in our group, we break into smaller groups and really looked at what is that collaboration going to look like and started mapping out those details so our potential pilot schools will know what that looks like. Uh, today we had representatives from our, um, our pilot principals, representatives um, from the members of professional learning group from the pilot schools, and we had representatives from each of those smaller groups. We met and we went and synthesized those documents to create one I hate to call it a draft document, but it's a draft document of what we think that collaboration time should look like. Um, we're very big into making sure that we're honoring the work of the other people on our team, but making sure it's gonna work for our district. So we're gonna meet one more time before we take it um, back out to our whole group um, and take it out to the rest of our team. So we're really excited about the work that we're doing. Um, also in our department, uh, we have the Expanded Learning Opportunity Program. As you know, um, we service students after school. Uh, we currently have 2,636 students who now have access to free childcare after school. What we also are providing is 31 intercession days. So December 16th, and you can see a picture of what our kids were doing at that time, as well as the two weeks of spring break and weeks during June, where we go and we provide that quality enrichment for our students. Um, what we're also, we, we've also done is expanded the staffing so we do not have any wait lists so our students are all able to get into the program. And then we're working with uh, facilities also. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Oh, Jamal. Oh, I know, I'm sorry, I just wanted to do everything. Um, what we're also, I'm so sorry. Uh, what we're also doing um, is working with facilities and seeing how um, the Expanded Learning Opportunity Program can go and work with facilities also. So the next thing, Jamal, okay, good. I'm going in the right direction too. What we also do in our department is really provide um, our other departments and we provide our school site support. And so what we're doing right now is really working with our, we call them our ATSI and our CSI schools because we believe really strongly in letters to represent everything that we're doing um, to make sure that they're building strong plans. Um, we're, make, we're working with the Educator Effectiveness Block Grant. Uh, we currently have a group of, of teachers in our district who are getting their GATE certification that's provided for us. Uh, we're gonna reimburse our administrators who are going through the Tier 2 program that's available through the Educator Effectiveness. Um, during spring break, our teachers are participating in QTEL. Um, we also have the BCLAD and, and the CLAD certificates that our teachers can be reimbursed for. So it's really provided a great opportunity for 
our staff to participate in this development so that we can make sure that we're giving our students quality educators. Um, also, um, as you may have heard, like we oversee $63 million just in, in the categorical funds, funds. And so we like to say, like we, we like to help make people make their dreams come true. So if you need something for your school site, if you need some, within, I'm sorry, because they're all going to go crazy on me. I'm just going to turn away from them. As long as it's, as it's allowable and it's an appropriate expense, we really like to work with people to make sure that we're providing our, our schools, our students, our staff, um, what they need in order to be successful. I'll look back at you all again. They'll all hit me up tomorrow, and you all know the rules anyhow. Um, but what we also do is really focus on that compliance piece of making sure that we're using our money appropriately. Um, and we we make sure that like maybe 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 slower we can't give you that with that fund but look at what we can do with you from that other fund so it's really about using our, our funds wisely so we can make sure that we're servicing our staff and students and so next up we have language support services all right good evening i'm going to be providing some updates from language support services, starting with our DLAC needs assessment and then dual immersion and lastly our parent professional learning group. So as you may recall in November, our DLAC needs assessment was presented to the board by our DLAC representatives, Yanet Murillo and Claudia Gutierrez, capturing both EL parent and uh, EL student voice. The committee brought forth one single recommendation. I think this skips, okay, sorry, which was learning. As LSS embarked on developing an action plan to address the single recommendation, we pulled apart this statement. We defined a conducive learning environment as one that is physically comfortable and clean, as well as supportive of students' social and emotional well being. Effective instruction is just that engaging, relevant, standards based instruction coupled with high expectations and necessary supports. In regards to creating a conducive learning environment, LSS has scheduled collaborative sessions with our district mental health and facilities departments. Our plan is to review the parent and student survey feedback with each department and work collaboratively to determine a plan of action. In regards to effective instruction for our English learners, our district is at a pivotal point in time. Ed Services is working with CABE, the California Association of Bilingual Education, and QTEL, Quality Teaching for English Learners, to provide teachers with new professional learning opportunities. These professional opportunities, <clears throat> oh, sorry, these professional learning offerings follow research-based approach for effective adult learning and that they will extend beyond the initial training opportunity. The learning teachers engage in will be supported through the year with in-class coaching, co-planning, observing, and modeling. There will also be systems in place to monitor and evaluate our progress as it pertains to the instruction and academic progress of our English learners. As Joda mentioned, we have a QTEL quality teaching for English learners training that will be offered over spring break. This is an optional paid opportunity and we have approximately 200 teachers already signed up from PK to 12 with a waiting list. Uh, we'll be sharing additional updates with the board regarding these learning opportunities as time progresses. Next up is dual immersion. Um, sorry. It works. Oh, it. Sorry. Uh, that was just a short snippet into one of the kinder classes starting their day, but the link at the bottom is a slide deck that the dual teachers have put together for the board so you can review at your own convenience. There's some pictures and some snippets of, of other uh, learning going on in their classrooms. I don't think the board is going to go Okay. So this next slide summarizes the current and upcoming events in regard to dual immersion. LSS has partnered with GABE to guide us in the development of a master plan. Our task force is pulling together teacher, administrator, and CPS expertise to write our dual immersion master plan. The plan covers every aspect of the program, such as registration, program design, professional development, teacher hiring, enrollment, curriculum, and student recognition, to name a few. The master plan will provide clarity to all stakeholders on the purpose of the program. 
It's a crucial component needed for program ex expansion, and this will serve as our guide for all future dual immersion schools. You can see on the timeline that we've rolled out our professional development specifically for dual immersion teachers. This is actually a request that was made on last year's DLAC needs assessment. Um, our dual teachers kicked off their learning with a Saturday summit and uh, focused on authentic reading instruction in Spanish. As a follow-up to the summit, all de dual teachers will receive coaching and co-planning with GABE. DI school administrators will also participate in a day of learning to understand program design, as well as their roles as program developers, advocators, uh, advocates, and evaluators. Next on the timeline, we're excited to announce that Dual Emergent Transitional Kinder is coming to Bernie and Grand Terrace Elementary Schools this upcoming school year, 23-24. Grimes is slated to open its TK doors in the 24-25 school year once they have facilities in place. Also in the 24-25 school year plan is the opening of our fourth dual immersion elementary school. We're currently collecting data from the potential sites and hoping to share a recommendation to the board at, by the end of this school year. Our plan is to allow that selected site a complete year of professional development and planning in order to be fully prepared for a successful opening in the 24-25 school year. Uh, as a side note, it's not listed on the timeline, but one of our other main focal points is strengthening, strengthening the existing program at Joe Baca by providing professional learning to current teachers and exploring options for students to have a third um, class taught in Spanish. Our third and final update for LSS is our parent professional learning group. Um, this diverse group of parents has been recruited with the intention of developing an action plan that will outline engagement and development offerings for CJUSD families. The parent professional group has held its first meet and greet on the evening of February 8th. During our first meeting, parents got to hear from Mrs. Lopez, who was a member of the design plan committee. They brainstormed opportunities that parents would like to have to ensure that they're actively involved in supporting our district's initiatives. This group is eager to participate in this process and improve outcomes for our students. Next up, information technology. Okay, I'll try to keep mine short since uh, board president was trying to skip through all of us. So, uh, um, so IT, uh, we basically cover every department, every division. Um, and so even when Mr. Fromm came on board, he was trying to hijack our department and Tina wouldn't let him go. So, uh, but honestly, we support everybody, HR, student services, and, um, and I'm just gonna give you a list of stuff we do. Um, uh, SIS, our student information um, system, it's our bread and butter, it's our data, uh, which we try to protect and keep safe because it has our student information, uh, all their PII personal identify information on there. Uh, so we provide the data to the state as far as the state reports to CalPAT. We do the report cards to the families. Um, master scheduling, uh, we, parent communication, we support that, getting information out. Currently, we uh, have a committee because we're looking to we feel our current student information system is outdated. It doesn't do all the, that we feel it should do in, in making our job and also the staff's job easier where they can pull their own reports and where it has better integration with other systems because we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting and it's, uh, it's, it's sluggish at points. So we want to try to get to the 21st century and we know that's a, a heavy lift changing any kind of SIS, but we want to get, um, the feedback from our stakeholders. So we include union members, teachers, administrators, so that everybody has an input. So that's in the process right now, what we're doing. Um, some of the other stuff we're doing is uh, site support, uh, where we support the staff at the sites, uh, whatever their needs, whether it's event support, uh, the devices, your laptops, uh, we're working on, um, our Wi-Fi uh, infrastructure, we're upgrading that. So hopefully next week we'll be presenting you guys with uh, awarded vendor from our E-rate uh, because we wanna upgrade our, the first phase is just upgrading our access points, but then we want to, like I say, once again, in the 21st century, we should be able to have access outside. So teachers have the flexibility to do uh, training and uh, instruction outside the four walls. So um, we're looking to do that as well. Phone support, once again, account provisioning with staff come on board, making sure they have the appropriate access to everything they need. 
Um, working once again with the HR, hopefully soon. I think this probably this week it'll go live for the pilot sites as our, our um, personnel control uh, system. We've been doing paper and some of the workflow has been 10, 12 people and you, we can see how paperwork gets lost or it's delayed for staff coming on board or new hires. So now it's being digitized. digitized so we, it'll all be through a, a system and it's automated. So we're supporting with that. Uh, we know transportation is going to Mr. Fromm in March, but we're working with them for hopefully next year we'll be on par and everything be a, the system be in place as far as students getting on the bus, tracking the students on the bus, and hopefully using one badge to tie in with their lunch, their meal program, the badge to check out a Chromebook, or even get on the bus. So we're looking at different solutions so to make it easier, not only for the staff, but the students as well. Um, more data. Oh, one of the, this is one of the biggest things. Uh, we helped in the collection of the alternative or leading the, the, the charge for the alternative income forms, which basically provides funding to the school sites. Uh, and we were able to accure uh, $50 million extra dollars to help support the sites where there was a shortfall. And I just want to give praise to, to not only my team, but the subs that we had come on online. We had four subs i think i had three and uh, took three of them to lunch uh, one was a former hr employee and she was coming all the way from like indian wales and so i'm like you can get a habit hamburger just for that so uh, <laughs> but no so they were very there was like a call center and so i i appreciate their help because it just assisted our team who was is shorthanded and it, it it made a huge difference supporting the sites as well um my vision is kind of sleek. So yeah, we got new, four additional techs, thanks to uh, Tina. So that helped with the sites, supporting, making it more efficient at the high schools. We added them to the high schools and auxiliary sites. And some of our principals over here, they greatly appreciate the new techs that are supporting them. So because it's our job, we're here to serve. Uh, we have the customer service mindset, uh, like we're here to make sure your job is easier. And so we'll do anything and everything we can to make it easy. Um, other things, uh, new help desk system, we've implemented that. It's, it's tied into an asset management solution. Um, I think the other thing we're working on, or we're working on right now, uh, because it was presented in our CJUSD design day, uh, one of the um, sessions was led on equity and Mrs. Hampton over here was leading that uh, that session, but a lot of the feedback was like there was inequity as far as the, the devices and things of that, not only for students, but the teachers as well. So we're trying to address that gap by making sure all the teachers, we talk about Promethean panels, not all the teachers had the Promethean panels or some had them that were several years old and didn't have the same functionality. So we're trying to address laptops, um, panels, whatever the need is to make sure that they all feel that they can do, do their job efficiently. And this week, the K through second Chromebooks have arrived with the cases. So they will be, the sites will be messaging out to the families that they should be able to, the younger kids can now pick those devices up since now they have their own set to keep at home as well, since we're talking about equity across the board. Um, uh, lastly, cybersecurity, um, uh, we've met with ACE and CSEA just to inform them that we're going to implement multi-factor authentication to protect our data because uh, as you guys seen in the past or in the news, it's a lot of uh, um, ransomware and attacks through many districts. Um, last but not least, this is probably the one most important thing I just like about my job is just student engagement. Like, um, and it was already acknowledged as far as Matthew Cortez, uh, we had a, a logo competition and um, Matthew won. And so I think, it, it, I don't think it was good that our team got to go out and just acknowledge what he did. And it, it you can see the smile on Matthew's face, but even our team's face because it connected to, and, connected to the individuals, the students. And even recent, I've been doing site visits with the principals and I've been at, uh, having some of my staff come and assist me. And some of it's their first time being on any of the campuses because they were said they weren't allowed to go on the campuses before. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. This is our district. This is like, and, and they understand like, 
it makes their job they have more value when they see they how it connects to the student their work how it connects to the student and so it resonated with them and uh, uh one of our fellow directors shared with me this video is called it was, it was something lollipop something but it was like lollipop moments where it's like these little insignificant things that you think are insignificant to you but it makes a big difference to the individual on the other end and we've been seeing a lot of that just by doing the student engagement and listening to on the CJUSD podcast. Uh, one of these pictures right here was a career day and one of our techs was breaking out a Chromebook and, and the kids were amazed and seeing how uh, the parts and stuff. And so we want to show them like, this is what you can do as well. It's not just a police officer, a fireman, or a doctor. They need to see and model what an IT person, and like we said, we cover all areas. So now they don't see Joseph as the, the guy who picks up the Chromebooks. Now he's like the cool, tear apart Chromebook guy, and so it resonates with them. And, 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 and one of the biggest events that I like was last week going to the APAC celebration. Um, and it was beautiful seeing like all the, um, all the families there because we didn't think that it was going to be such a t it took probably 20 minutes just to put out cheers because we didn't know it was going to be so many people there and one lady was talking to me um because i can connect because we're brothers sisters and stuff like that my my mom from a my sister from another mister a mother from a, i don't know what i'm saying but <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we were connected and she's like you guys didn't think we were going to show did you i'm like I guess we didn't. And so, but it was good to see the turnout. But one of the things that was a blessing there is like two young girls came up to me and they was waving and saying hi and took a selfie with me because they remembered me from when I went on the kindness bus and I was going site to site dance. And then one at uh, Harupa Vista, we had a dance battle and they were there challenging me. So it's like those little things that can connect to the students, that to, can keep them involved, to keep them engaged. That's what we're all about. So we're not just about the, the binary, just putting things together. We do have a heart and we do want to connect with our students. And uh, lastly, I'll just show the image. It's not that great, you can see, but uh, this is the image that Matthew uh, created for us. And we're getting him some swag. We're getting his teacher, Janet, some swag. So they get some jackets and polos. And our team is excited to, 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 support this new brand that he had so um i think that concludes my portion of the presentation and the team as well so thank you any questions thank you jamal so my question as a principal is when students start taking apart their computers that's <laughs> not not a discipline issue right <laughs> not right now <laughs> <laughs> i had a boss that said he did that <clears throat> um many years ago when he was a student and he got in a whole bunch of trouble for taking every radio apart. Now, that's how old we are, but um, yeah, thank you. That was really great. Um, <clears throat> any, other, any other questions? I do have one, but I'll start with Mrs. Flores. Well, first of all, thank you for the presentation. The three directors, uh, you did an amazing job painting a picture of where we're headed and, and what we, we've been doing. I really appreciate, especially IT because a lot of times you're behind the scenes, and it's good to see you step up from behind the scenes to see what, to show us what you're doing. I really uh, appreciate it, appreciate what you do, and it's so important. IT without IT, where would we be? So thank you, thank you for that. Um, also, I just wanted to uh, say 30, 63 million dollars in categorical. That's a lot of money, and and um, you know, don't take back what you said. You know, you said you ask principals, what do you need? That's a good question to ask. Ask the principals, you know, what do you need for your school, for your teachers to be better teachers? And and teach and principals, I see a lot of principals in, in, in the audience go back and talk, ask your teachers that the same thing. What do you need to for your kids to succeed? And that's why we're here. That's why we're here to provide what you need, not what we think you need. So I appreciate that question, um, Joda. And then also um, Dr. Moore for uh, the QTEL. Um, I've known about QTEL for years and years, and it has been the highest quality uh, quality of professional development. Um, how you got them to come to our district, I have no idea, but kudos, kudos to you because they are uh, in high demand. QTEL is probably the best uh, 
um, and you know professional learning that we can bring to our teachers and to have 200 teachers participate that has to have an impact so thank you for that um, so uh, I think that's it thank you thank you very much any other questions Mrs. Harrow <clears throat> I just have a comment not really any questions uh, my comment is for something uh, that Jamal was talking about about how you went out to the schools and and uh, how exciting it was for your team to be out there. I think it's really important for um, many of the teams that we have in our district. Uh, you know, I know like Joe to your department, you you know you were a teacher or you were a principal, and and a lot of them came from the classroom, but a lot of them have not. And a lot of departments, finance department and your department, there's a lot of departments, uh, HR, okay? They're doing their work every day and they don't realize what they're doing is for the kids. And they really need to, every once in a while, get out and see those kids and see the difference that what they do makes a difference in those kids' lives. So I thank you for going out there and doing that because I think more of our departments need to do that so that they realize the difference that they're making. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. <clears throat> Any others? Uh, I'm gonna piggyback on what she just said, a different um, approach, but also when, kid, when per people go out to the school like that, Kids are looking at that. They realize this is a grown-up. That's a job. When I get when I get big, <laughs> I could do something like that. And I just think that's a really positive thing that we can do for our kids too. I do have a question for Dr. Moore, and this may be uh, something that you're in the planning stages. But under effective instruction, um, <clears throat> three to five hours in in-class support for next school year. How is that going to play out? <laughs> Where are you going to get all those people for three to five? Is that a mandate or, or just a, a hope? <laughs> that is part of the mandate, yes, that we are going to have to provide that in-class support. Um, it is something that we're in the process of, uh, we've shared with the site administrators, and then we're going to be going out to sites to discuss with each school how that's going to look, because the reality is they need to, uh, the key person is an EL specialist. Some schools may have that person on staff. Others may need that support from our department, or we may need to co to um, contract with GABE. Whatever it is, our, our plan is to meet with each individual site and determine what their needs are and then develop that plan, because we will have to honor that plan. So we may be looking at additional personnel or contracting people out to come in. Is that also possible? Or will we try to do this with our own people? That's that's three to five hours each person. That's a lot of hours. I think great, but I just wonder how are we going to do that? And we do have a wealth of knowledge at the sites. We have our EL, each site has an EL site lead. Um, uh, granted, there's different capacities at each site, but we also have our department. And then, as you mentioned, there may be a, a need to contract out for some of that support as well. And the monitoring evaluation of ELD, is that overall or is that at each school? Or is that something that's going to fall on the principals to do? Or it's kind of a joint effort? It's going to be a joint effort. Okay. Thank you. I'm very in, uh, informative. And thank, we thank, I thank you very much for the presentation. I think we're all left here learning and understanding something a lot more than we do. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll move right along. See if I can skip anything else here. Um, I guess I can't. All right, item 6.1 through 6.38. Is any Does anyone have any uh, item they'd like to? Am I wrong again? Oh, right, right. <clears throat> And there are any other items that we want to post? No? Right, right. Okay. I just we have will a quick, pull. Sorry. Oh, I just had a quick, it's a comment, really. We don't necessarily need to pull it on 6 9. Just wanted to thank staff. If that's uh, happy to do that very quickly, if that's appropriate, but rather than pull it for separate consideration. You want to pull it? I would do no, one of the Yeah, if I could just okay, actually, go ahead. just, a, just a, a kudos to staff. I don't want to think this is 6.9 or field trips, which includes um, the Inland Empire Future Leaders Program. I want to thank our, our, Cabinet and superintendent and staff for uh, again participating once again. Colton Joint Unified has a long standing history of participating in this program. Uh, as many of you know, this is the program that was started by Dr. Uh, Tom Rivera. So I actually participated in this program when I was a student many years ago. Um, 
uh, and it has changed the lives of so many young people in our district. And you know, we literally have two members of Congress um, that have participated in this program. So we have a longstanding history here in the Inland Empire and certainly in Colton Joint Unified School District with Dr. Tom. So thank you for that. I truly appreciate it. Okay, thank you. All right, could I have a motion then for um, item 6.1 through 6.6 .6 and 6.8 through 6.38? I have a motion by board member Haro. Second by, yeah, Ms. Shreebar. <laughs> I'm doing well tonight. Um, to approve action items 6.1 through 6.6 .6 and 6.8 through 6.38. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Okay, so on a motion by Board Member Haro and Board Member Ibarra, carried on a 6-0 vote. The Board approved action item 6.1 through 6.38 with the exception of item 6.7. Okay, thank you. Item 6.7. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, second by Mrs. Flores. Any discussion? All in favor then of ex the motion to accept the slate of officers that we had six as is. Um, all in favor say aye. All op any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So on a motion by Mrs. Haro, second by Mr. Uh, by Mrs. Flores, passed with a 6.0 vote. Okay. Moving on to item seven point, administrative report, seven one and seven two. Are there any questions or comments from board members? None. Okay. No comments. Item 7.3, facilities update. Mr. Chang, Director Chang. Good evening, uh, Board President Thorin Ojeda, Board Member Superintendent uh, Miranda. Pleased to um, provide the Board a summary of uh, some of the project, active project where we're uh, working on. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, first up is the Bloomington High School Auditorium Equipment uh, Rigging uh, Replacement Project. So, that project is essentially complete with the exception of the digital sound car. As I previously reported, the board, you know, with the supply chain shortage, did, you know, especially with the chips and so forth, would continue to uh, get you know, delays and, and the delivery of sound car. What the, the purpose of the digital sound car is, it, it's it's the kind of the brains of the digital sound system. It has a lot of bells and whistles. What we've done with the contractors, they provide an analog system that still allow some of the functions to still allow the school to, to operate and, and to hold their functions, but um, everything is not complete until we get the digital sound car. So that's really the main thing that's, that's remaining. So we'll continue to keep the board posted. The progress to keep my fingers crossed. We're told that uh, it should arrive at the end of April, but they've been telling us every month it's another delay. So, but again, I'll still try to be optimistic and be hopeful. Uh, next uh, project is Colton High School Auditorium Rigging and Seating Replacement. So, seating is uh, essentially complete. We have some miscellaneous work that needs to be completed, and the rigging is moving along well as also. So, we're scheduled to complete in a couple of weeks so those are some of the progress photos we just had the new uh, stage curtain delivered today and they're going to be installed uh, contracts work on electrical raceways uh, for the rigging as well as some of the right uh, the right photos just shows the new rigging that's already in place uh, next slide please all right also please report to the board that uh we the gymnasium we're, we're close to the finish line we're it's about a week and a half Way from turning the the flooring back to uh, the school site, 
um, all those unfortunate things that, that happened. The timing it actually it worked out pretty well because it didn't occur during the summer because summer mines was really that's when all the um, flooring contracts are busy. So fortunately, uh, we didn't have any <clears throat> schedule, uh, any of the material or, or schedule uh, delay. So we're we're happy to be uh, um, able to turn that back to the school and in about a, a week and a half. Uh, next slide, please. All right, also I'd like to give Bor a quick update on the Professional Learning Center, the boardroom at the 900 Washington. That's moving along as well. So picking up uh, momentum and pace continuing with the mechanical electrical rough ends uh, installation and uh, erection of the wall framing and drywall. So uh, that project should uh, is picking up momentum. So we should uh, have about uh, three months to go uh, until completion. So we're looking forward to finishing up that project as well. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Um, on the upper half, Crestmore Elementary Curb Appeal Path of Travel Upgrade. It's one of the board priority projects. We have bid that out previously, but the numbers were, were quite high. So we thought we'd, we'd try it again uh, this time and get a better pool and, and hopefully we get some more favorable numbers. So it's actually out on the street right now. We're hoping um, to uh, take it the uh, bid to for the board or to the board for a war in April. And uh, so that we can commence majority of construction in uh, during the summer months to minimize the inter interruption to the site operations. Also, the bottom half, I know it's long waited for as well. So staff's also been working diligently in trying in working on the demolition phase of the Lions Club building. Um, although we don't have the parking lot design uh, completed yet, uh, we thought it was important to take advantage of summer months again because all the noise and dust and everything that's generated to take advantage of, of the summer months and, and conduct the uh, demolition activity uh, over that period of time. So we were um, are actually preparing the bid package uh, for uh, summer construction. Uh, next slide, please. All right, a couple uh, more update also. We are working uh, on uh, actually the both the plans for the turf replacement, track resurfacing, as well as the pool repair. Those are all in the Division of State Architect for review. So we're hoping to receive approval between the month of March and April. Then we'll um, commence the bidding and follow by construction. So again, we'll continue to keep the board uh, updated on our progress. Uh, next slide, please. All right, uh, playground structure. This is one of the the, the funding that we have uh, allocated uh, executive cabinet to um, dedicate to the playground replacement. So these are the um, the playground that we identify that have the highest need. They're one playground each each school that we are, are currently uh, in DSA for review. So we're hoping to get obtain approval in about a month or so. Then we're going to bid out the installation work and get that uh, project, hopefully uh, the playground uh, replacement done uh, over the summer break. So we're excited to to get that underway. So we did uh, complete the Silver Mountain a preschool in the upper right hand corner. It's a site very. Uh, happy with uh, the new playground structure. So we are looking forward to do the same with the other campuses as well. Uh, next slide. All right, also, quick update. This is the uh, reminder. This is the uh, American Rescue Act plan, which is a federal grant administered through the county that uh, we received about $3 million of grant to provide uh, field lighting as well as some synthetic turf at Bloomington High School, as well as Joe Baca uh, field lighting. Just want to provide a board update our progress and, and some of the um, studies that we've been doing, we're currently soliciting uh, for architectural and engineering services because the lighting design has to take be you know submitted to DSA for, for review and approval. Uh, so that's a little bit lengthy process, but in, in interim, we've been working with some lighting manufacturer to, to uh, meeting with the site uh, staff, get their input on locating light poles and, and so forth and, and uh, at both school sites. Uh, one thing we're also looking at Bloomington High School is is because those light poles are 60, 80 foot high, we're also looking at possibility of using that um, to serve as a foul ball netting for the baseball field as well. So that's also something we're uh, looking at. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, also a couple more update, Colton High School, Culinary Arts Building. Is that a uh, previous update board? We did have a bid opening. Unfortunately, the price with all the escalation that we're seeing, it's just unbelievably high it was um quite shocking so we're doing some val value engineering 
and uh, working with the architect. We're going to do more outreach to some of the contractors. So hopefully we get more competitive bids. And, and so we're going to undertake the rebidding effort shortly. Um, on the bottom half is a Ruth uh, Grimes Elementary TK Kindergarten classroom shade shelter that I've been working with the, with the site staff. And we're also um, applying for a state match hope to in hopes of receiving some of the state match to help to pay for the improvements at at Ruth Grimes. Uh, next slide, please. And then I believe maybe the last slide. So again, same thing with the Wilson uh, TK Kinder classroom edition. These are some of the progress, uh, uh, the uh, the rendering, some of the concept designs that we've been working with the school sites and looking at materials and and interior uh, layout with cabinet finishes and different things. So it's a, it's been a fun process and it's site is very excited about the the uh, the new building as well. All right, and next slide, please. I think that's concludes my update. So open up for any questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Oh, Pat, I'm sorry, Ms. Aro. It's okay. Um, so we received this money, the uh, money from Supervisor Baca and that whole thing, and we're doing the lighting um, at Bloomington and we're doing it at Colton High School. Um, if though, after what happened yesterday at Bloomington High School, okay, I've received uh, an email from the parent. I received a call from the parent. And um, my question is, if those poles are not be able to be used for the netting, what are we going to do? I was told by our superintendent that uh, when we spoke to this earlier today, that the last time we, when we did the upgrade on Bloomington, when we um, redid, uh, we did some fencing and we did the, um, the dugouts because they would fill with water and the kids couldn't use them as a dugout. Um, when we did that, we, that it was too expensive to do the netting at that time. And now we've had this situation happen and, um, the situation of those balls going out on the street that that that's been happening since when supervisor Baca was a, a the coach there okay when you know every principal who's been there has had to deal with that and every coach has had to deal with that and you know i have a car that has all i parked in that little when we added that when we added the math and science building when we added that side parking for, for baseball that has a divot from where a baseball hit my car. Okay, so that's been happening for years and we've never done anything until now we're looking at doing it. Um, I think that this board needs to say, regardless whether we can use those poles or not, we need to put the money into that project. We, we truly, we need to do it because um, we're lucky that no kids have been hurt before chasing after those balls. Uh, there's an owner of a, a building, I don't know if he still does it, a, across the street from the school, uh, standing in those, that he would collect the balls and then he would bring them back to the coach and try to sell them back. To the school. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Grand Terrace High School has netting. Colton High School got netting, and I understand we had extra funding, so they got it. Okay, and and it's always been. And Sandy's heard it, and I know that everybody's always heard that. Uh, you know, Bloomington High School feels like they are the stepchild of the district. The parents feel that way, the kids feel that way. You know, we built Grand Terrace, beautiful school, you know, and Colton High School, you know, when they put in Ken Hubs, they got to keep, they got to keep Macintosh Gym. We put in an NPR building, they're getting to keep the other cafeteria, okay? They got their, when we got our fields or whatever, when Bloomington got their fields redone, 
that's great. It was wonderful. Everybody was happy, but we didn't get netting because there wasn't money. So I don't know, but we need to fix this. And we all, because another child is going to get hurt. And that's unacceptable. There is no price on a child's life. So I think that that's something we as a board need to, to seriously consider when we dole out money from uh, the uh, bonds or whatever it is. That needs to be at the top of the list. If you know whether or not those polls, if the polls can be used, great. If they can't, doesn't matter. It still needs to be done. And thank you. I'm sorry I didn't mean to, uh, but but you brought it up, so I figured I would talk about it now. But thank you for the report. Thank you, Mrs. Harrell. Can I? I'll clarify. Sorry, I just want to clarify that the funds uh, for uh, to High School uh, softball and baseball field lighting. Uh, they're not for Colton High School. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought I heard Colton High School, so I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Yeah, I also want to clarify, too, that, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Owen, but there's not, there's not foul ball netting at Grand Terrace High School. There's only a backstop. That's correct. Okay, yeah. So uh, Colton High School does have uh, uh, foul ball netting, and that was part of the original scope project. Uh, when it was uh, designed and approved by the board, uh, and it was part of the scope of the project. So what we're proposing is to include the foul ball netting for the varsity baseball field as part of the uh, lighting project there at Bloomington High School. Sure. So yeah. that would take care of the issue. Uh, Mr. Well, Flores. Just, to, just so also I, I understand, I'm familiar with the, the field configuration. So just to uh, be technical, if I understand it correctly in talking to some folks, the issue is predominantly, is it along the varsity field first baseline, those balls that are being fouled behind the dugout and going across the way, which, okay. Um, so we kind of know, and there's studies that actually can be done to identify the locations where we can cut down on that. Um, truth be told, you're not gonna stop every foul ball. I think anybody that's been to any kind of ball game has seen that. Um, I live on the backside of Colton High my my nephew played baseball for four years at that field there are plenty of balls flying on clunking on folks cars and stuff it sucks it's not fun it's happened to me um but that is no excuse for an adult assaulting a student quite frankly so when it comes to safety the issue that occurred uh i don't care if the ball hits your car house there's no excuse for what occurred out in bloomington and it was an adult it was an adult, not a baseball, uh, not a coach. You know, it wasn't the kid. It was an adult who made a decision to uh, do something inappropriate towards a student who was simply trying to, re to a player who was simply trying to retrieve a ball. So um, it's unfortunate. It'll be addressed uh, by the school and by law enforcement. But yes, obviously, if there's a way that we can reduce the number of foul balls, it needs to be done. We're looking at those alternatives. Um, my understanding is part of the plan, um, but um, there needs to be some um, reasonableness applied here, and uh, I'm upset at what happened, and it's just there's no excuse for it. I'm sorry. There is no excuse for an adult getting into an altercation with a student over a baseball, period. So I'll leave that at that. Um, well, I'll leave it at that then. So. Mr. Barra. Thank you. Uh, on the same subject, not going to draw it out that much, but I probably would recommend at this time that uh, until that can get resolved, uh, that uh, the baseball team do not send uh, students to go uh, retrieve foul balls uh, because most teams have three, maybe sometimes four coaches uh, and have a, one of the coaches go uh, retrieve that. This way we could eliminate the student uh, adult factor in this so that uh, until we resolve the netting and so forth. And just to, uh, to bring some light, uh, you know, I played baseball almost all my life. Um, and, you know, it was not unusual for, you know, fall balls to go here and there, 
one time I hit a home run and I broke an apartment window. So, uh, and that's true, true story. Um, but uh, you'll notice that a lot of the, even the 66ers, uh, Angels, Dodgers, they're just starting to put additional net netting up because of the foul balls hitting the, the spectators and doing that type of thing. So, you know, it would be good practice, you know, and, uh, you know, just like my colleague uh, Pat mentioned, I would support us, uh, Mr. Superintendent. I, I would go ahead and support it, you know, us to continue to look into uh, putting up netting, you know, regardless. So with that, I'll leave it at that. Um, uh, my question had to do with Joe Baca Middle, Middle School. Just just for clarification, it looks like uh, you know we're going to be using some of the funding for field lighting. And is the field lighting primarily for Joe Baca students and activities, or is it being put up for youth sports? Um, it, it's for both, but primarily because the the lighting is generally for for community um sports yeah. okay if that's the case my next question is who's going to monitor that lighting and who's going to incur the expense of that lighting is it going to be the district or the, the 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 sport program that is utilizing it because uh we have problems you know at, at cone high school you know i still see the lights on midnight and they're on you know, went by there the other day and the front gate was open. So maybe one day I'll go and take a, a lap around there, you know, at midnight, you know. But, uh, you know, that's not being resolved. I know with uh, the deal we have at Cone Middle School. And uh, so is that the plan? So a couple of things. I actually reached out to City Rialto to see if they would have similar agreement where um, other cities where they can cover the, the utility cost because some of it will serve their community as well and the other thing we're working on is we're uh, actually updating our facility use fee so we can present that to the board future about possibility of at least uh, assessing you know some of the uh, the electricity costs um as well that's okay that's a possibility. Well, we also require those uh youth sports to do any type of repair to the field if damaged uh utilization of the restrooms just trying to get a clear picture what our intent is here yes yeah typically the uh the use of restrooms or there are certain different situations like certain uh like colton youth soccer they bring their own porta potty in certain situations where they use a the restroom we have assessed fees and in for our custodial uh, services to for certain groups to use uh that use our facility that require our staff to work um you know after hours to support their event okay so then my question is that will those same uh porta potties be uh out there when we have our students taking pe um in in the situation at colton where they do have porta potty yes they're they're out there in the field but then in a, in a corner they're they're in a different spot right but this will be in the plain sight of our students I'm just throwing some things out that I think that uh, over the years that I've seen being seated here in the seat, uh, problems that we've had to deal with. And, and when we really welcome doing these type of things, uh, we need to also think a little bit beyond what we're doing and to see how it's gonna affect the district. You know, uh, we're gonna ask our custodians to clean them out. Or we're going to ask our custodians or yard people, uh, our landscaping to, to fix to fix the fields. You know, I'm hoping that uh, you know our our brain trusts here are thinking that deep into before we start, you know, moving in that direction because those will be problems that will occur. I'll guarantee it. And uh, you know, are we going to give them keys? Because right now, I'll tell you, you know, everybody, I think when one of my neighbors has keys to Cone High School, you know, so, uh, you know, and it's just true. It's all true. 
I'm sure Dan knows a few people who has keys, you know? And uh, so, you know, what's the intent here? And, you know, uh, you know, and my last question is, since it's Cone Joint Unified School District property, will our students have priority use over the community use? Yes, definitely. And, and, yep. and you know, if our, if our students so choose to have a soccer game in under the lights, will they be asked to be bumped out of there because community did it, you know, asked first? Will we be thinking that far ahead with our facilities department to make sure that all those dates are, are saved for our students? Uh, so just gonna throw some stuff out there. You know, it, it looks all good on paper. It looks like we're doing a great thing, but if we don't take care of some of the things that may come up and be prepared for them and discuss them and, you know, I'll guarantee you we will have those problems. And then, then some. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amara. Anyone else? Dr. Miranda, you want to address some of? I, I just want to add that any kind of agreement, you know, facility use or anything with any of these groups, anybody uh, in our district, we will bring back to the board and we'll have clear expectations for these groups. And we meet constantly. I know uh, Owen's office meets. Uh, we have conversations with them. And we ex when they do not meet those expectations, uh, we do uh, ask them to leave our facilities. But again, I'll reiterate that we will bring back to the board uh, these agreements for approval so that there's teeth in them and then we can hold them accountable. And I know it, you're absolutely right, Mr. Ibarra. It's great on paper, uh, but it's about monitoring because what gets monitored gets done. And so we have to uh, ensure that we're doing that part. And that's the part that we need to work on is monitoring uh, and, and working on that. And uh, so, uh, so I'm glad we added a facilities project manager that can help us with that. Sorry, Diane, <laughs> but you know, uh, so we appreciate that. So, uh, but I didn't tell her that in the interview though. Okay. The uh, prize. Nope. Sorry, Diane. <laughs> I, I have one, <clears throat> actually two. First of all, I think um, the suggestion on having adults only go after written balls, that's a pretty easy one to fix if we could do that. I don't know, I'll, but I'd like some feedback on that. But secondly, it's something I brought up when I first came on the board, um, <clears throat> and I know I've mentioned it, I mentioned it to Sherry in here. I know it's costly, sorry, Greg, but um, key security is really a concern for me. And I know I came from a place that was very strict on key security. Um, and I know it would cost a lot, but we have, there needs to be a system where it's monitored <clears throat> um, with keys checked out, keys, get keys checked back in. I'm fine if you lose it, um, because we have keys, from my understanding, in a lot of hands that shouldn't have them anymore. And it's too late, I think, to just try to fix the problem. I think it's going to probably involve, I don't know, it's the great two department, but um, having our at least our high schools um, rekeyed and and had the entire district go into a monitoring of keys because we're very lucky we haven't had a lot of theft, but I would think that we probably had more than we realize. Um, so I'd just like to throw it out there to consider that and get a report to, does anybody have a monitoring system on them at our schools? Because if you remember, we had a very strict one. Um, back when we were working together and i just think it's really important thank you so our goal is to access card to, to go away from keys where you each person that has it it's tied to them so you see who swipes in and you can turn their access off from there so that is our eventual goal to go through access cards throughout the whole district and, thank you and i'll just say that we pilot the the access in fact uh, we're wearing some now uh it, obviously it needs to be involved it's a significant project that that we're moving um uh, and, and i'm not gonna say looking into something that that is our goal and so uh 
we, we are uh, developing a plan for that. If I may uh, address uh, for a president's question about the key, we do have a, a process in place. A maintenance operation has a process in place for outside groups when they use a key. There's a form that they have to sign. They have to inherit liability in terms of uh, the deposit two hundred dollars, and then there's also language that requires them to pay for repeat keying uh, if we have to rekey uh, the locks. So the process is in place. But um, some of the things I'm hearing is that it's not outside groups there are other individuals that are giving away district keys but we do have a, a process in place but something like uh, assistant super prom said about taking utilizing technology you know, access control and control car will definitely help to alleviate some of the the ongoing issues that we have with keys thank you and thank you mr Fromm. i think that's really the ideal solution uh, Joanne, just real quick just right may, based on what you just said uh owen um when we do give keys to outside groups, you know, there needs to be something in the contract stating that if they share or copy the extra keys, they would no longer be welcome in our facility. We need to, to, to come down a little harsh on them because uh, well, the first thing they'll do is go down to Target, go to that little kiosk place out there, have them make 20 keys and then go from there. Um, so I would say that, you know, we need to think a little bit more and how we're going to stop them from sharing those keys. And the, the only way I could think of is to tell them if they do share it, then they, they're, they're whatever community, their groups will not be able to access our fields. We'll, we'll, we'll deny them usage, something to that effect, because we have to get serious about this, I think. Thank you, Mr. Ibarra. Thank you, Owen. We, uh, it's always it's, it's great to hear the things that we're doing because we've done a whole lot just since I've been on the board. It's amazing to me the facilities planning that's gone on and how many new buildings we've opened. It's pretty exciting. Not only for us, I mean for their kids, they love it, and it's it's just so nice because what our new employee, I forgot, sorry, I forgot your name, said, you know, it's it's so important for kids to have a good, a nice facility to go to, and we've done some amazing things, so thank you. Thank you. We are now at item 7.4, ACE update, Mrs. Prachi. esteemed board members, Superintendent Miranda, cabinet members, and members of the audience. My name is Christina Poracci, and I have the privilege to be um, serving as the president of Association of Colton Educators. I hope you had a good Valentine's Day, and I want to start with happy birthday, Dr. Peterson. I know I'll embarrass her, but I had to do it. She's here on her birthday. Um, so today, um, I'm here to thank you for uh, the guidance provided to Executive Cabinet on negotiations. Um, I know I kept on saying every time I wanted and I kept on moving my deadline. Now it's June 1st. <laughs> um, I'm happy to announce that ACE and district bargaining teams um, reached an alternative agreement on Friday, um, February 10th for the 22-23 school year. The association will complete the ratification. Uh, voting will take place between um, uh, February 21st to February 28th and we will bring the agreement to the uh, school board hoping that you will uh, uh, vote yes on March 2nd. Um, so the, usually the association makes a decision on what to negotiate after we survey all our members and we're very dedicated and very um, um, intentional on what we negotiate for. As you know, um, CJSD, one of the biggest um, every year, the, the priority has been health healthcare. Um, and you probably all heard and got tired of hearing the debt spiral. So um, the district, uh, with the help of Health Benefits Committee, uh, worked with SIBA, our um, JPA, to try to fix one of the debt spiral, uh, one of our insurances. I'm not going to use the name right here, but one of the insurances. Um, we still have a lot of work to do to, to complete and finish the um, 
what we need to fix that it's been going on for since 2011 and uh, but we are in the right direction i will encourage you to stay tuned for our campaign we are going to do a strong campaign before um um open enrollment to make some movements that would help uh this movement to be productive if we don't do what we need to do it's not going to be um productive so we have to work on this i do want to thank you for making this room say uh, uh, uh making sure that it's safe for me to be in this room <laughs> so i don't have to come to the door look for balloons and run out of the meeting so i appreciate that so if you don't see me here, somebody's not happy with me and they brought balloons. Um, I want to thank you for your support and um, for the dedication to Colton um, School Board. I know it's a lot of work. I know how much time it takes out of your daily uh, uh, time. Um, I do want to say kudos to HR. 35 new subs. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you, Christina. I think we were all woo when we saw that list. <laughs> That's great. Do we have anyone here for 7.5 CSEA update? I don't think so. 7.6 MAC. Okay. And ROP? Mrs. this Harrell? Yeah. So we did have a meeting, but before we had the meeting, um, a week be a uh, week and a half before we uh, had the cry rop the all staff in service and um, they had uh, dinner for everyone who attended and then we had April Rinney she has uh, wrote she uh, wrote the book about uh, flux in your business and it's the flux five superpowers for thriving in constant change and she gave <laughs> an amazing uh, presentation. And some of the overview um, on the, uh, after speaking with everybody in regards to uh, her presentation, some of the takeaways were to model to our students instead of mentoring them, to model to them what you want to see. Uh, courage over comfort, always. It's about what we can versus cannot control. Um, there were a lot of others, but I wanted to share the three that were the top. So she was, a, uh, it was really a great uh, in-service for all of the staff. And as well as uh, she sent out, I know that um, our principal from BHS also attended. So it was a great, great evening. Um, it's also a CTE month. And uh, there's a lot of things happening for CTE month. And then the last thing I wanted to share about our meeting is I had brought up last year when uh, CryRop did their strategic plan. I had shared it with board president Flores at the time. And um, right now we are telling our story and story S is strength. Two, T is tackle, to tackle what we need to do to get things done. O is the outside factors. R is building relationships. And Y is yes. Um, and this document, when I shared it with Board President Flores, I showed the, shared the difference on the thickness of the strategic plan versus the very, very old, uh, uh, the very, very old Colton Joint Unified plan. Um, and this one is very easy to read and very, uh, easy to do, but they had on their next steps. And they had six next steps after putting together the strategic plan. And three of them are already done. So I think it says a lot about le sometimes less is more because you can get more done by doing it this way. So I just wanted to share that, that they were able to, uh, and they're not done, the, the year isn't over yet. So those other three will be done by this year. Um, and I just wanted to uh, uh, thank my colleague for letting me uh, bring do the report today because we had a lot happening in CryRop. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harrell. 
Item 8.1, superintendents communicate. All right, well, thank you, Board President uh, Joanne Thornojeda, Board members, Executive Cabinet, members of the audience, and all those online. I want to first start off in my communique uh, this evening. Uh, you know, we've had a fantastic month and it's going so fast. The month of February is Black History Month, as all of you know, and uh, uh, Jamal mentioned uh, the uh, APAC meeting. And there we have a picture of the all the parents. We probably uh, violated a code a code <laughs> there, so I apologize, but it's on me anyway. So, but it was such a great event uh, event there, the African American Parent Advisory Committee, uh, and staff uh, have hosted many of the events throughout the district to celebrate Black History Month. And, and last week, I mean, it was a privilege and honor attending the Black History Month Achievement Celebration. Obviously, at Joe Baca, as we uh, call it, our conference center, but not for long, not for long, Dr. Scribner. Uh, so uh, students receive certificates of academic achievement for outstanding ed educational growth or achievement for the first semester of 22-23. Uh, as you can see, again, family-packed event that I, again, thank for the bottom of my heart, APAC and our CJSD leaders uh, for hosting this awesome event. It, it was fun, celebratory, and just to see the, the students and the families there uh, taking pictures with them. It, it was just awesome. The music was awesome, too, so uh, it was fun. It was fun. So if you didn't attend, sorry, you missed out on just an amazing event. So just an honor to be there. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, I want to talk about our parent workshops. Uh, you know, our district, uh, past few months, has hosted many parent workshops. And not just for parents, but of members of the community. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Assistant Superintendent Dr. Ortiz and his staff for establishing relationships with our local officials and taking uh, time to host all these parent workshops, along with our Colton Joe Unified School District security supervisors, and then you see uh, well, our SRO, and then obviously Frankie Maestas uh, there. So Deputy Dominguez, along with security supervisor uh, Supervisor Maestas, presented information on drugs and fentanyl and, and that awareness and the opioid crisis that's happening in our, our not only our communities uh, so uh, and then talked about student trends and what to look out for so many parents uh, have attended these workshops a uh, lot of questions and I'll tell you as a I shared this uh, as a parent of a high school uh, student you know kid it, it obviously it's like wow you know, there's a lot there that our kids are dealing with. So really appreciate the education that, and the leadership that our student services and our supervisors are providing uh, to our community. Uh, and last uh, slide, please. The District Band Festival. Uh, this is more of a shout out. Uh, Tuesday, Jan uh, February 28th, the district will be hosting uh, its annual uh, CJSD District Band Festival at Colton High School uh, Gym. So. I want to invite all the students, parents, and the community to this really awesome event. Uh, and so along with the Board of Education, I'm looking forward to this great event and uh, just hearing our students and showcase their talents because we have a lot of talented students uh, that are amazing in our district. And so it's fun to, to listen to music and, uh, and, and I've been there pretty much every year for the last 10 something years, but so. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an awesome event, so I encourage everybody to attend, and uh, you won't uh, regret it, uh, for sure. So with that, uh, that is my communique this evening. Board President, so I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Okay, we're at item 9.1, board member comments. Uh, Mrs. Harrow. Thank you. Um, uh, I want to uh, talk, uh, say thank you very much to Principal Neighbors from Grand Terrace High School um, for allowing me to come and meet with him along with Melinda Medina. This year, Grand Terrace High School will be 11 years old in August, and Ms. Medina is the oldest daughter of Ray Abril. She is also the spokesperson for the Abril family. When uh, we met with Mr. Uh, Neighbors to talk to him about the display 
that's in the uh, entrance to the school. When the school opened um, 11 years ago, Principal Dissinger, myself, and Ms. Medina, uh, we set up the uh, display case. Uh, the board had approved us to set up the display case. And the display case was all the items that were donated by the Abril family uh, to celebrate all of the wonderful things that Mr. Abril did as a board member, all the different awards and accolades he received. Uh, Miss Medina, as I said, is the oldest uh, family, uh, the oldest daughter, and she wanted to meet with the new principal. She had heard there was a new principal, and she wanted to meet with them to make sure that the case, while well, the items were still in the case, and that um, uh, everything was there and set up. And so we went to go see, and it was, we were glad that we did because there were now uh, things moved, things, there were other things in there besides Mr. Abril's uh, items that were, they had donated. And so we sat with uh, principal neighbors and came up with some ideas. And Ms. Uh, principal neighbors came up with a wonderful idea. He spoke about, uh, since he's new to the community, he had been to uh, the Ken Hubs gym, but he didn't know who Ken Hubs was. And there's something there that says, has like a biography of who Ken Hubs is. So he said it would be nice if the district, uh, uh, maybe Katie, <laughs> could write up uh, a history, you know, a biography of Mr. Abril that they could put in that case so that people would not just look at these plaques and say, well, who was that? They would be able to do what he did and he read about Ken Hubs and he said, yeah, now I know why this gym is named after him and what he did for the community and something like that. So um, I, I said that I would ask and see if something could be written. But the thing that the, um, that the Abril family is asking is, uh, she didn't know if it would be a resolution or what it would be that we would do as a board, but that um, the agreement that was made for these items to be in the case and to be there for future people to know what uh, Mr. Abril meant to this district and why the school Nate was named Grand Terrace High School at the Ray Abril Educational Center, that um, if we could do something that would, that we wouldn't have to keep doing this every 10 years to go back and make sure everything was there and not moved. That if we could uh, do something as a board to uh, uh, make it so that this would be permanent and that we wouldn't have to. So I don't know what we would have to do as a board or what we would have to agree to, uh, but, um, they would like something in writing that the items would remain there. And, um, and then when we do adopt something, if that's the case, they would like to be invited as a family to the meeting so that they could see it being done. So, um, um, I'm asking for uh, a, something that we can do, if we can get a consensus to do that for the family, if that's agreeable with my fellow board members. Yeah, yes. if I can, sorry, uh, Mr. Barr, if I get uh, direction from the board consensus, then I can come back with some options yeah, or meet with the family, talk to them on what they're. Yeah, I am total, totally in support of that. Thank you. We have consensus. Uh, I do, but I, I think, I think this raises a very important point, Pat, and you're right. Essentially, what we've been given are items that we're curating on behalf of the family and whether or not they're the property of the school district or on loan, if you will. So this is, I'm drawing them on my, my wife's experience in the museum world, but these are very important artifacts that need to be cataloged, literally cataloged, what the items are documented so that, because you're right, over time, things go missing, things get moved around, and we need to have an inventory, a cataloged inventory, so we know what these items are and a clear understanding that if they're being loaned to us from the family, 
uh, they're being loaned with a particular purpose. And should something happen or we want to do something different, they've got to be, they've got to go back to the family, right? They can't be moved. She around. was going to actually meet with principal neighbors and before it got, um, the, some other things had been added to the case that didn't belong in there. So she was going to meet with them and they were going to, uh, mark them on the back catalog them on the back of them. And then, um, then we could. Because they they had donated them to the school, sure. but they just they just want to make sure that they're going to like you said they're going to and that and that should be in writing too. So I may have some suggestions on folks we can talk to to help us just uh, document that properly. And you're right, and, and and memorialize it in agreement that this is the purpose for it. This is what it'll be used for yes. and maintain in perpetuity. So no, I think it's a great idea, and it just got me thinking, boy you lose the institutional memory quickly as people move on. And if it's not in writing and if it's not documented, um, you, you can lose it. And just That's what she was afraid of. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think it's a great idea. So do we have consensus? Yes. 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 And you had something you wanted to say. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, there's not many of many of us here that knows the history of how that, uh, uh, high school got its name, uh, and if you if you were around, then you would know. Um, I think that uh, what we have of Ray Ray Abril, uh should nothing should be added to it from any outside. I think it should just should be memorialized in his name for everything that he did for our district. And to add other outside, uh, whatever it is, I don't have an idea what other stuff is in there. Uh, I, you know, I don't think there was any malintent, but I think that uh, we need to make sure that what we put together for him, and I agree with uh, Dan on as far as categorizing it, we need to do that and have that in the district office, not at the high school. I'll tell you that for, for sure right now. Uh, but we need to make sure that it's only uh, Ray Abril's uh, uh, items, I'll put it that way. So just something to think about, but I, I would recommend that. So we do have consensus, yes? Yes. Thank you to the board for their consensus. I appreciate that. and. Um, I know you're going to talk to Ms. Medina, but I'll, I'll call her. She was waiting for my call tonight to let her know that that we agreed. And thank you, principal neighbors again. Um, uh, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, last board meeting. I spoke about information and communication in our district tonight. I want to talk about the difference between management and leadership. What is management? It's dealing with complex institutions, dealing with questions of resource, organizational design, immediate goals that the organization needs to accomplish to survive in a changing environment. What is leadership? Leadership is somewhat different. The famous definition that we all love by President, General, uh, President Dwight D. Eisenhower it's about deciding what has to be done and getting others to want to do it. It's about dealing with change. It's about thinking longer term into the future and shaping an environment for your organization to be successful over a long period of time. We deal with a lot of change in schools. Management is dealing with is about dealing with data. Leadership is about heartbeat. I know we have a lot of principals here today uh, on the staff. Um, I know that you all lead with your heart because you wouldn't be in education if it wasn't because you care about kids. So I want to thank each and every one of you who is here for our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harrow. Ms. Sandoval. Uh, 
Um, I'll just happy Valentine's to everyone. And I just want to thank the staff uh, for involving all the parents, the kids, and the principals on the activities and the workshops, um, collaboration. You guys mentioned that. And I think that's, that's awesome for involving every single one. Also, I'm looking forward for the dual immersion for the 2023-2024. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sandoval. Ms. Bertha Flores. No comment. Mr. Dan Flores. Just want to thank everybody that uh, participated in the all county band concert. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect and man, was I impressed. The kids were amazing. We have an and Colton was well represented. We had our music teachers there and uh, principals. Uh, thank you for that program. My son is participating in that program and he has grown a lot. Um, he, he let me know early on, Dad, I'm not really an athlete, but I love music. I said, okay, we'll make this work. Uh, no, no, it, he, it's it's beautiful to see that aspect and how it has helped shape him as a student. So uh, every kid has a gift, every kid has a talent, and it's our job to draw that out and to foster it. So I, I really appreciate um, the music programs that we have in our schools, all the arts programs that we have in our schools, because they do amazing things for our kids. So looking forward to the district uh, concert. So should be good. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Board Member Ibarra. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Pat for bringing up that issue uh, on the, the Abril family. I think that, you know, that it was a very important that she did that and, uh, and met with them. I um, want to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate our new director here. Yeah. And I want to thank you for uh, for choosing Cone Joint Unified School District as a place of employment. Um, as uh, as the president of the foundation for Cone on uh, Redlands Ukaipa ROP, um, we're we're getting ready to have our annual uh, award ceremonies in a couple months. And uh, in the next couple board meetings, we'll be bringing uh, invitations to everyone. And if you attended last year, you would have seen uh, quite a few of our Colton, Bloomington, and Grand Terrace students uh, get scholarships, $2,000 scholarships um, uh, to uh, institutions of their choices. And uh, we also had a, a, a like a, a showcase, a, a school showcase of all the different career programs that uh, we offer it here in Cohen Joint Unified and throughout the Redlands and Ukaipa. So it was very, very well attended. And uh, we look forward to, to having another great uh, uh, program for those, uh, our students. And as, uh, we uh, continue to work really hard uh, toward helping our students achieve their goals, academic goals. One of the things that I'm pushing for is to increase uh, ROP courses and classes at our middle schools. I really believe that uh, our middle schools is uh, a target area for our district to show improvement in scores. Uh, and by offering them alternative classes that are A through uh, A through G accredited, they can get uh, regular grades from them. I think that if we're able to start looking at providing like uh, computer courses, culinary arts, uh, electrical courses, um, my colleague Israel Fuentes is not here, but he wants to, uh, uh, and he talked to me about putting together uh, interpretation course. And I said, well, we're going to do that for our high schools. I'd like to see if we can do that for our adult school as well, because uh, you'll be and you'll be surprised how many school districts, how many county facilities, how many hospitals need interpreters. 
and I've already talked with uh, the superintendent of uh, CryRop to see if we can start working on getting something like that together. Uh, my objective is to make sure that the students who are in middle schools have a reason to feel like they can gain something from middle school. Uh, as you guys all well know, two years is a very short period of time. And during that period of time, I'm afraid that we lose a lot of our students. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to lose them. I want them to be coming in with a purpose, with an idea into high school so that they could have something to look forward to. So if we could uh, show them something different and, and uh, that will encourage them and motivate them to do well in their studies uh, at, in the seventh and eighth grade and give them a purpose, then uh, I think, you know, their high school, we'll have less high school dropouts and better high school graduation rates. Um, and I've seen it with some of the students that have taken the ROP courses that wanted to drop out at one period point of time while they were at school. So it does really help. And uh, the, the teachers we have are, are excellent. So I just wanted to put a plug in for that and just kind of let our superintendent know that, you know, I'll be talking more to him about that as we're pushing forward on on some of those ideas. Um, like my colleague said, I mean, I don't know where January went. It's gone. It's in February. We're already past halfway there. So it's not going to be long before we'll be hitting uh, May, June, and, and, and summer vacation. So we have a lot of work to do in a very short period of time. And, and we all know that. I'm not saying anything you don't know. But uh, one of the things that uh, I like about this district is that we do it together. Let's work together. Let's plan together. Let's uh, move together and so that we could accomplish what we need to for our students come the end of May and early June. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ibarra. And it's my turn. Um, <clears throat> tonight we adopted four resolutions. And I, when he said, when he was, Mr. Ibarra was just talking about introducing kids at a younger age to different things. And, you know, a lot of our kids think go to school for reading, writing, and math, and that's about it. And I think it's really important that we um, have the resolutions that we do like this month, arts education, music in our schools, read across America, and women's history. Kids don't usually think about those things. And if we, I encourage everyone to make that a, a I don't want to say a priority because there's so many priorities, but make sure that kids do realize that those things are important because some kids are more attracted to art, education, music, and those are important too. And there are careers in that. And I think if the more we discuss it with kids, the more we let them know, the more opportunities they may realize are out there for them as they grow up. Speaking of Read Across America, I've been very, uh, since COVID, uh, even though I never went anywhere, I kept getting it, um, but I haven't been in the schools very much. So I'm really excited last week, um, I got to go to a dual immersion visit uh, at Grand Terrace Elementary. I, I shouldn't say I was amazed because I know we have really good teachers, but oh my goodness, I saw some things in classrooms that were just, they blow you away. Teachers that like make it look so easy. Well, it's not easy. They really have skills and they're doing a great job out there. And it was just, for an, for an old principal to see that again, it was really encouraging and kind of uplifting. Uh, kudos to all of our teachers and our staffs for our principals for um, monitoring that kind of instruction since we're making it, teasing me about my monitoring idea, uh, belief, because uh, it was just an amazing visit, and I hope I get to do more of that. And I'm gonna start off by um, trying to get to as many schools as I can to do Read Across America. When I was teaching, I had taught primarily kindergarten first, but I was a reading recovery teacher too. I love to teach reading. So to go and read to kids is just, it's fun. I love to do it. 
So I'm hoping to see many of you uh, this year, and unless COVID hits me again. Um, so it's really exciting, and I just thank you for all the hard work that goes into to reaching each and every one of our kids. Let's see, I had one other thing, but I can't think of what it was. <laughs> I didn't write it down. So with that, we are going to adjourn into closed session to discuss the items listed on the closed session agenda. Thank you for coming, and good night.
Okay. The board voted on a 6-0 vote to settle case number CIV SB 2220745 with IDI Logistics LLC San Bernardino County Superior Court case number CIV SB 220745 for $1,300,000. Item 11.2. In closed session on a motion by board member Flores and seconded by board member Ibarra and carried on a 6-0 vote, the board took action to reject the tort claim. Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, item 11.4. On a motion by board member Haro and seconded by board member Flores, carried out a 6-0 vote. The board approved the following. Personnel public employee appointment, certificated regular staff one, classified management one, classified coaching six, band assistant co-ed, basketball assistant girls two, head junior varsity basketball boys, head varsity softball girls, varsity softball assistant girls, volunteer coaches, Coaching one and volunteer general 16. And with that, everyone have a safe drive home and good night.